you know, just be like, what the hell? Have like super goblins. See, I I love I I love the weeby goblins because in the first one I played Poog the cleric, and the second one I'm like, okay, I'll just keep playing Poog, and then that's the one where you rescue Squealy Nord, yeah. and I kept him with me through that entire adventure, saying he's my animal companion now, and then in the third one, Squealy Nord is Poog's animal companion, so I'm like, yes. Yeah, I play Poog. You influence Canon. Poog is pretty cool, and uh, yeah. I like Squealy Nord. Poog is the best. Yeah, I, my first time play, I played, um... Yeah, no, I didn't play Chuffy, I played the, uh... The Alchemist. <laughs> Dude, the one person, like, uh, had, like, a... The, like, the first one, I believe, they had, like, a wand of fireball or something. Well, someone got the... During one of the trials, somebody used the wand of fireball in the trial, and it killed, like, all the things. And it was like, oh, well... I guess we're done with this trial now. Well, it's okay. When uh, I was running, uh, like Tierney was playing Poog in the you know the trial parts with the uh, you know the competition where they're uh, you know in the the mud pie with all the sturges and uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, well, she's just like, okay, channel negative, channel negative, channel negative. No, no, it wasn't uh, the mud pile sturges. It was when you're in the cauldron with the eagles, I think. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so everything, my companions and everything, was in range of the channel negative. I was like, channel negative! It's goblins, who cares? Like, you're gonna hit your partner, and was like, yeah, I know. It's okay, goblins. But I'm gonna win! win. They'll understand. They'll forgive you. What's funny is another time Eric was running it, and uh, this father was playing with his daughter, and his daughter was like... I don't know how old she was, like somewhere between seven and... I think she was actually seven. Yeah, she, she, I know she's less than ten. And she didn't really understand how to play, so I was sitting next to her and explaining it while she was playing. And so when they're doing the like the race or something, I know she was playing someone who had Fireball. I'm like, okay. She was, she was playing play Mog Merch, yeah. uh, except my table was so full that I had made duplicates of, it, of the characters. And so she was playing Moggy, the female version of Mog March. Well, I, I'm so she's doing the trial. I'm like, okay, now here you can do it straight, or you can cheat. What do you want to do? She's like, I want to cheat. I'm like, okay, throw the fireball over there. She's like, okay. So she was having a blast playing a goblin. Uh, I'm worried that I won't get a I won't get a game in before uh, next Saturday. I won't get the won't get the freaking boon. Do you have to play, or do you just get the? Or are they just handing out the boon? Well, you have a week to get. You have to play in a game, and it has to be submitted. It has to be an. It has to be like an actual society uh, game. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I won't be uh, doing that. So, I haven't. What's I haven't played on? a society game in since I ran one at our local convention. Yeah, because I'm in the online uh, collective thing. So I'm. I mean, I'm hoping I'm be able to get, a, get into a game this week or next week, but. I mean, if, if we really needed a game, we could get one because we, we know the venture captain of the area, you know, and, uh, but I I'm, don't think we care that much. Yeah, if I, we really wanted a game, I could just run one. It's a cool boon, though. What's the boon? Uh, let me pull it up. It's not as cool as my rat folk boon. Yeah. yeah. That is a pretty cool boon. I'm thinking about a rat folk, uh... Rat folk boon? Rat folk, uh, freaking Starfinder is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, Anno, in, in Pathfinder Society, there's your own, you know, there's certain classes or, or abilities or races that aren't allowed for normal play. Yeah. And sometimes it's because they're just not balanced or, you know, whatnot, and right. so they don't want to use them. Uh, and sometimes they save, like, races to be boons, where if you, you know, do certain things, you'll get a boon, and that means you can, it, it's basically like a little piece of paper that says, you get to play a rat folk, so you get to play a character. In, in like an official game? Yes, you get to make a rat folk character as oh, one cool. of your official characters. So free RPG day 2017, uh, boon says if you get a free replay day, so you get to do one free replay of any of the Weeby Goblins for any character you have, f four credit. 
uh, Master of the Fallen Fortress, Dawn of the Scarlet Sun, Rise and Risen from the Sands. And then uh, the other benefit is the Tome of First Contact. Uh, you get a strange tome that blah, blah, blah. You roll a knowledge check to identify an aberration, ooze, or outsider. And uh, learning results. You can check one or more boxes uh, that precede this boon. Each box you check can leave one additional piece of information, blah, blah, blah. But basically the, what's really cool about it is you can do one of the... Uh, the one of the goblin ones or one of the other little modules again for you know for free without having to like, <laughs> burn gm stars or anything yeah some of them you can do you can replay anyway any of the level one ones are replayable yeah all the all the evergreens but the, the, not the you know not the goblin ones or the master fallen fortress or Donna's master fallen fortress is replayable it's unless they've thing. made it yeah, it, it all, all uh, stuff that was level one uh specific were evergreens unless they've made it not one I but be, I it like be on the sheet that you're here if it wasn't because of the, the benefit of it. Because I know I've replayed that scenario many times for credit. Hmm. It was a great beginner uh, scenario. That the first we be goblins is also level one. It was also an evergreen. The uh, the ones that are not, you know, level ones were not evergreens, but. Yeah, it's for a different character too. So like, yeah, so it's not you can use it for the same character. I don't know. It's a cool little, cool. Little... Oh yeah, it's a nifty boon. Um, I actually, you know, because uh, uh, the what is it? Not Fallen Fortress. The Risen from the Sands wasn't bad. Um, and if you run it, you know, where it just don't make the people use the crappy uh, pregens they attach to the game. Yeah, the pre for Master of the Fallen Fortress kind of sucked. They were just trying to showcase the new... Not, no, not Fallen Fortress. Risen from the Sands. I know, but the Fallen Fortress one, they, uh, the Fallen Fortress one sucked. So well, that's because they're made with 15-point buys, so they were they're to, not. They like, uh, showcase the new like alchemist and stuff. Or was it? it was some other base classes they were trying to show off. So once Sala gets back, we will start. Oh god, that dude is such a fucking moron. And right? I, it amazes me that I see people share his shit. It's like, really, dude? I, yeah, I'm, I'm a, yeah. I'm a man. It's like... It's mind numbing, you know, the, the fucking stupidity that this dude produces and people just fucking. You know, it's like people are willing to buy into whatever. As long as you're convincing enough and you tell them it's good for them, somebody's going to fucking fall for it. Yeah, but I mean, some of his shit is so goddamn far off the wall. I know. I know. Gravity is a toxin. What? Right? I don't. No, I, I no, I I don't think that's how that works. Aliens, man. The thing is, if you're upside down, you're still under the effects of gravity. Yeah. You know exactly. You're not floating around and shit. You're under the effects of gravity everywhere. The really mind blowing thing is you're under the effects of all things gravity everywhere. Yeah. Did you know there's hydro there's a dihydrogen monoxide in your system right now yeah. and that it rusts metal? It does. What's it doing solvent. to your insides? It's also a good solvent too. In fact, every single creature in the world that has been exposed to dihydrogen monoxide has died. Stay woke, people. Yeah. Stay woke. It has. I'm not going to let the end New World Order come take this uh, dihydrogen monoxide away from me. Okay, we were sitting here. Now we had what? We just had the one fight in that one room, and we've got these other three rooms to go through. Correct. All right, we did not rest. We did not break nothing. I don't think we just stopped. 
Okay, I couldn't remember if we rested or not. I think the plan was to clear these four rooms and then rest before we went downstairs. Because if, if I recall, Michael should be pretty low on channels and... I think the only sp actual spell I used last time was a fireball. The rest of the night I was just tossing out hexes like candy. Trying to, anyway. Okay, I am super sorry. I said something in the thing, but apparently didn't go through. Um, or on my phone. I my computer decided to do a restart, and I'm so sorry. Okay. Now that we're done waiting for Sala, oh, we know you're sorry. Just apologize. Any traps on this door? On that door? Is there some, like, option I have to click to be able to ping stuff? You have to make sure the, the, the uh, mouse pointer icon is highlighted. Yeah. Other than that, it's just and, yeah, then... hold down your left click. Just push your left click. Oh, you gotta hold it down. That's what it was. Yeah. Sometimes it, sometimes there's a second or two lag, so. Uh, that door is not locked. Is it trapped? It is not trapped. All right, we all ready to go in? Yep. Yes, sir. I open the door and step in. I, oh, okay, I was pushing the wrong button to talk. There we go. There's a, okay. Okay. The shelves of this room hold thousands of handwritten journals, and bound books containing hours upon hours worth of automatic writings as well as transcripts of trances and drug-induced ecstasies. The writing covers thousands of subjects, and while some passages and pages may make sense, most of it is useless garbage. A single chest sits on the floor between two of the shelves. Are there any traps in the room? Uh, the trap is chest. The what? Or the love. chest is trapped. Do a quick uh, detect magic in the room. A big old three. Uh, you managed to disarm a trap. Uh, Anno, give me a spellcraft. With that spellcraft, the trap on that chest was magical and was a greater glyph of warding spell uh, that contained chain lightning. Ow. Good to know. That would have sucked for y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, inside the chest is a scroll of horrid wilting. A gold and obsidian corkscrew in the form of a hand worth 300 gold. And a carved stone on a cord of woven hair. Do a detect magic on the stone thing? Uh, it is magic. List spellcraft. Uh, 
Uh, this is a Periaph of Health. It is something that you wear around your neck, and it makes you immune to disease. So does anyone have a low fort score? Define low. Is it your lower score? Under plus five modifier? Or plus five or lower modifier? Um, it is five. Yeah, my total is also five. Okay, what are you wearing as a neck piece, Sulla? A amulet of adaption. Oh, so that you don't suffocate. Yep. And Anno, you're wearing what? Natural armor? I believe so. Neck, you say? Yes. Yeah, amulet of natural armor. I kind of like that, so... Okay, while well, you all figure out who's going to get that, i got to grab a book from the other room real quick. Thank you. Uh, it's immune to all disease, including supernatural diseases. So we can't get space box. Yeah, I'm wearing an amulet of natural armor plus one, but I mean, being immune to disease, that's tempting. Yeah, I've got, you know, without, even without the heroism, I've got like a plus 16 on my fort save, so I'm not. Yeah, mine's plus 10. What about our healer? Uh, I think my fort saves are good. What do you wear as a neck piece? I think it's uh, an amulet or something or other. Well... Yeah. Well, if no one wants it, then Victor will take it. Yeah, I think I'm happy with my uh, natural armor amulet. Okie dokie. I like breathing. So I'll put the amulet of natural armor in the pot. Alright, so is it plus one? Yes, plus one.
And can I get that uh, scroll of horrid wilting? Oh, sure. Uh, any of the scrolls, just, uh, you know, if they're ones that you can use, just take them. It's called dibs. Yeah, just basically just call dibs um, so that we know. Like, there's ones, uh, I don't know, you, can you use Dimension Door? I already have it. Okay. I took it, it was one of the spells I learned recently-ish, I can't remember. Okay. Well, the thing is, because you could always, that means you could use the scroll without a cast. If you don't have it memorized, you could sure. always just read the scroll. And Horrid Wilting is such a fucking brutal, vicious spell. <laughs> I know, it seems like a very witchy thing to do, so... If only you had Spellcraft, that idol of, uh... Of, uh... What's his name? Bakrug. It had the ability to cast Horrid Wilting. Okay. But you never, you never tried to Spellcraft the idol. Was that the crazy monkey idol? Or no, the lizard. the lizard idol. Yeah, uh, I think we were more concerned with getting destroyed by a fucking great old one. No, but you could have used it in your other adventures. Yeah. But it was a dream item. Could have used it in the dream. I suppose. Yeah, we had a lot of items in the dream world that we never used. Is this door trapped? Which one? Bottom left. Uh, no, that one is not trapped. Is it locked? It is not locked. I open the door and step in. Okay. Um, let's see. The books in this collection focus on the art of calling and binding outsiders. Massive tomes full, filled with nothing but diagrams for summoning circles, sit alongside collected research, guarding some of the most effective methods of bargaining with outsiders for their service. Yeah, one. You do not find any traps. Hey, it's still a 29, you know. <laughs> We're clear, guys. It's cool. Anything magic in here, <laughs> Miss Glowy Eyes? Erevin, what do your witchly eyes see? Fuckery. All kinds of fuckery. You do get a sense of uh, of uh, residue magic in this room, but you don't actually see anything. Same as a lot of the other rooms. Uh, Want to search around and see if there's anything of value in this room that we could secure? Sure. Is that a sure. baby or a monster? That was a baby. Okay. Wait, what babies baby. are scary. It's, it was Michael's mic. Oh, it's on. Crap. <laughs> My, bad. <laughs> My bad. It's okay. You just scared me. Okay, if y'all are going to search the room, get into the room and start searching. Yep. No, that door is not trapped. I'll watch the hallways. Okie dokie. The door shuts. Roll for initiative. Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, sucks for you guys. This is going to be pretty brutal. I feel the need to point this out. It doesn't say where the fight's going to happen. All right, Victor. Victor will take a five foot step towards the door and try and open it. Opens right up. Maybe come on in. 
Why'd you guys shut the door? We didn't. Maybe it was the wind? Yes, Sal, it was the wind. Victor's paranoia will keep him from going into the room. And he will ready in action to shoot anything nasty that might appear. This attack is going towards Amos. Since it's invisible, yes, they both hit. It is now Amos's turn. Hang on. And that second one does uh, successfully grapple. Uh, something's got a hold of me. If only we had invisibility purge. Yeah, I know, huh? I, Amos? Yeah. Um, well, I will attempt to break the grapple. Break him. Break him. Just waiting on your roll. Yeah, I have to do it as a dice roll because I don't have my CMB stuff set. I do click my heels, by the way, just because it gives me more armor class and an extra bonus. You manage to break free. Barely, but you do it. And I five foot step back to there. I okay. say, uh, hang on, and for my free action, I said, something grabbed me from right there by the last, is that a pillar post? What What are those brown things on the floor? Uh, let's say that they are pillars. By the, that would actually be the second pillar in, correct, because there's a pillar right here? Mm-hmm. So something grabbed me from right there by that second pillar. Right, oh. now I'm done. Could have grabbed you from here or from here. No, it grappled me, so I know what direction it came from. Oh yeah, okay. Um, crumb. I am going to take a five foot step, or not, and then cast invisibility perch. Okay, you cast invisibility perch. Ervin. And nothing happens, of course. Of course, because they've decided to give everything natural invisibility that isn't affected by the stuff that goes through invisibility. Of course. Let's see, uh, I assume glitter dust doesn't work on wouldn't work on that then. Oh no, it absolutely does. Glitter dust is the whether it's naturally invisible or not, it'll still sparkle. Yeah, right, nope. Let me make sure I've still got it because I think I may have used it last session. You used one of it. We did rest at some point last session, though, I think. Or did we? I can't even remember now. Oh, yeah, I got it. Uh, cast, cast a glitter dust all up in there. Okay, where are you going to cast it? Kind of here-ish. Okie dokie. Does a 31 hit? Me? Yes. Yes. Make a concentration check. Actually, let me double check. 
Yes, it absolutely does. Uh, D20 plus caster level? Uh, plus the damage. No. D20 plus your caster level plus your intelligence modifier. For the concentration check. The DC, however... Jesus. What level is the spell? Glitter death? It's a um, three? Okay, you lose the spell. Mm. Well, I think I lose it anyway because I rolled a one. The one doesn't matter. Really? Okay, uh, Sala. Sorry, uh, Indra. Amos, Krom, and Victor, give me a reflex save. Krom. Well, all of you except Michael, you you take half of twenty nine. As a as a blast of wind just slams into you. That's what fifteen. Fourteen. You round down. I thought you always round to the worst number. No. Officially, the rules you round down. There is some ruling that actually says you take the worst. You know, if if there's a an effect, it's not in the the, the target's favor. But I can't find where it is. Michael. And he was eaten by the baby. That's why you you don't have kids. They're vicious monsters. Yeah, they are. Michael, give me a reflex save. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, you take 14 damage. And none of you are knocked over by the wind. Indra. <laughs> um, okay. I am going to begin to dance. And then I'm going to cast haste on. on everyone. Wait, why do I? Too late now. I was just, well, if I'm going to cast defensively, um, I, logic tells me that stop if somebody right there. Just stop. There. Stop right there. Stop. Don't go with logic tells you. Just remember the mechanics of the game. But if if you got attacked and Red got attacked, then that means it's probably not in um at least you got attacked before you moved. Uh, then it's not in any of the squares that are adjacent to me. Right. Red is not adjacent. If it attacked me from here, and it's say it's a large creature, so it would take up these four squares right there. Right in this area, okay. That would that would mean it has at least reach to hit red over there, which means you're the same distance that she is. We also don't know if it's just one creature. Right. Plus, defensive casting mechanic, like from a story standpoint, is you're just not relaxed casting a spell as you're on edge casting a spell, so you're concentrating on it more. Yeah, you're basically in a combat stance. Like you don't cast. have to have something eating your face at that very moment. You can cast defensively with nothing next to you, as far as you know. But Well, let us see how this unfurls and, and how badly my ass is handed to me. So you cast haste without casting defensively? Yes. You're fine. Victor. Uh, Victor will 
shoot arrows right there. Right there. Okay. Let me look up real quick some rules. First, give me a perception check. You have to pinpoint the square. Perception rolled. Okay. So that was first, second. Okay, so now roll, roll to, it, it does look like there's something in that square. Okay, I will launch my arrows. And my haste attack. Yeah, big rolls, big rolls. Okay, um, on your first three and your haste shot, each one give me a 50% uh, roll. High is good, low is bad. Yeah. This game's awesome. Okay, so all your arrows miss. Yep. Okay, this is going at Amos and Victor. First one at Amos, second one at Victor. I'm calling some hacks. There's total hacks. So that's hitting my, what, flash footage? No, um... I need to assist my wife really quick. Okay, yeah, it, it is actually your flat foot. Ignore all your dex bonuses. Yeah. So I'm hit and grab. Okay. Okay, so it grabbed us. Uh, it automatically, when you grapple, you pull the person to an adjacent square, so tell us where to move. You guys are already adjacent to it. Okay, that doesn't mean it's reach. We have to actually be adjacent to its spot. Yeah, you are adjacent to it. Okay. I can tell you right now, these are medium sized creatures. And I forgot to do this earlier for Amos, but I 
both of you take 12 damage from the constriction. Okay, that was the wrong button. Accidentally just closed down my entire thing. GM died, so the monsters die. We win! We have won it, Pathfinder! That's not how it works. The whole world has died. But you know what? It's no concern to us then. Okay, Amos. Well, since it's grappling me, I know where it is. I'm just going to full attack. Because apparently right. we can't do anything else, so... Yeah, it's in that square right there. I know where it is. I mean, it's the only possible place it could be to attack both of us. And uh, the 50% money. I know, I'm rolling all my attacks first. Okay, so which ones do I have to roll for? Remember, it is grappled, too. So grappling removes its what? Dexterity? Alright, I'm back. Okay, so roll it. If getting grappled removes its dexterity as well, then roll for all of them. Roll for all So one, two, and, and four hit. All right, right heavy breathing. breathing. Turn, Turn off your mic. mic. Sorry, I'm fat. I was gonna say I was I'm, I was turned on by this. All right, so then he would take uh, thirty-one, so fifty-nine, seventy-nine, eighty-five, eighty-six, uh, eighty-nine, ninety-four points of damage. Assuming he's not immune to Sonic. Okay, it's invisible, so you can't tell her how hurt it is, but it felt like you connected solidly. Crumb? Michael? Okay, we'll skip him. Erevin? Okay, um, can I see anything? You can do a perception check. Alrighty. Okay, now I'm really back. Okay. Okay, well, Erevin, you do the perception check. Michael, it's your turn. Okay, I'm going to channel positive energy. And I'm done. So you are enemies. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Where, I don't know where these enemies are, so I can't select them. Okay. okay. Aaron, uh, your perception check. Uh, roll twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay, you can't 
Oops, really make out where anything is. Can I do a knowledge check to have an idea what we might be going up against here? Yeah, I'll give you a knowledge check. It's going to be hard, though. Oh, yeah. I am going to suggest you do knowledge planes because we were told that there are uh, residents of the planes that are down here helping, and we've already come up against some of them. Is that what it would be, GM? G give me a knowledge planes check. Boop. Uh, there is a type of air elemental called an aerial servant, which are naturally invisible. Okay. Um, any particular vulnerabilities, resist re resist resistances? You need to have magic weapons to hurt them. Okay. Relay this information to the group. And I think everything else I can do relies on line of sight, so I guess that's my turn. You could take a five foot step so that you're removing at least one direction things could hit you. Sure, I'll take a five foot step that way. Yes, now we're all in a line. Okay, I, I was adding their still score uh, incorrectly. Right. Fom's telling me it's a static number. You can tell that there is a something invisible right there. Okay. Um, can I get them all to get on that five-foot step then? Okay, he's saying that you don't pinpoint the square, but you do know there is something invisible in the area. So so no, you don't get a mulligan. Okay. Okay, that's my turn. Okay, the first attack misses. Uh, Aravind does a 27 grab you. That's CMD? B? CMD. CMD, and yeah, it grabs you. Yeah, it's not high at all. Okay, you take an additional 16 from the constriction. Okay, so what am I adding here total? 9 plus 16, 25. Indra. Um, seeing my friend getting squished and these guys getting squished, I think it's time for me to cast defensively. Just like Aravin, you can do a perception check and try to figure out what square they're in. Okay, so level is 11, plus my charisma is uh, 6, is that 17? That's your defensive cast? Yes. Do you want to... Use your perception to figure out which square they are in. Oh, I guess I'll do that also. Okay, before you do, hang on. When you're trying to find something, all right, you make a perception check. It's a DC 20 to notice that something's wrong. There's, there's an invisible creature around you. You won't pinpoint it. It's almost impossible to pinpoint the square just by looking. That would add 20 to the difficulty check, so it would be a 40 perception check to actually figure out what square it's in. You can, if once you know that there's a invisible creature around you, make a touch attack, basically you feel around with your hands, into two squares adjacent to you to try and locate the creature. Okay, well... Now, if it strikes you, you know the location 
uh, of the creature that struck you. So, would we like to know the location of the creature by the bard reaching out and touching it, or uh, Amos, would you like uh, heroism? I've still got heroism. If we took a break? We didn't take a break. We were in the same hallway. We never rested from last week. Then things are even dire than we thought, because I'm going to start running out of spells quick. Um, fine. Let's let's reach out and touch some peoples or things or spirits or elementals. I, I've never done an unarmed attack, so how do I how do I do such a thing? Just make a basic melee attack roll, um, and you're just trying to touch attack. You're basically just groping. So that is a. <laughs> I, we're not asking for a tickle. We're asking for a punch. No, you're not punching. You're just groping, groping to find. I don't grope. I stroke. Uh, what is that? Like a roll? Like a D what? What? D twelve. It's an attack roll. A melee attack roll. What are your numbers for your melee attack? It, do you have weapon finesse? I do on my bow. Weapon finesse doesn't apply to a bow. That's weapon focus. Weapon finesse. It's a feat. Uh, no. Okay, so you take your base attack bonus, your strength bonus, and whatever the bonus is from your bard song, and haste. So basically, in this case, your base attack bonus plus five. Plus five. So that's... 'm guessing I a didn't feel anything or B totally didn't uh, touch anything no well there we go Victor okay so since I know where this thing is I can't shoot can I no because you're grappled and it requires yeah. two hands to use your bow so Dropping the bow, quick drawing my scimitar, and attacking attacking the grappled creature that, there. Okay, dokie. Okay. So, Indra's dancing, correct? Yes. 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 Plus yep. Four. Or plus three. Plus four. And yeah. you have haste, which is plus one more. Can I? I, I don't know the answer to this question. Can I study a creature that I know is grappling me, and I know where it is, but I can't see it? No, because you have to see it. Okay. So then this will be... So this will be plus four to these attack rolls. And, or plus five to attack rolls, plus four to damage. And then minus two for being grappled. So, yeah. And there's the haste attack. Okay, the second one's going to miss. And then you got the 50% on all of them. So, second two hit. First one misses. So 
so that's 25 damage. And 2d6 for Sonic. Is it a magic scimitar? It is. It is a good old plus one scimitar. Okay. So five Sonic damage. Once again, this thing's going to be hitting at... Well, this time it's going to go for Amos and uh, Victor because they both hit it. Okay. It is going to give you hugs. That one's for Amos, and the second one is for Victor. And what is what is that? I that grapple. is, it's grapple check to keep you grappled. That actually misses me by one point. Is this our just straight CMD? Straight. Well, your CMD with the minus uh, two, because uh, grapple is minus four to Dex. So that would make my CMD 30. Assuming I'm not getting any bonuses from the dancing. No. Did you add the bonus from the haste? No. So that'd be 31 then. So both of you are released. Well, we're not released. He just doesn't further the grapple. So he so he does not constrict. Right. Okay. Amos. Uh, second verse, same as the first. I'm just going to chop away where the guy is. Of course, that crit on the first one misses. And the crit on the fourth one misses. It's okay, they're elementals. Ah, okay. Now I don't feel as bad. All right, so that would be uh, 54, 66 points of damage. Okay. This thing's still up. It's invisible. How would you? Or you guys both feel the grapple dissipate. I was about to say it's invisible. How would you know? I'm like, oh yeah, you're grappled. So you you feel the thing grappling you just kind of fade out. Actually, if it's an elemental, it would just disappear because it's a you know extra planar creature. Yeah, you you feel it basically fade away. The the wind holding you kind of just breezes out. All right, at that point, I will then five foot step this way. Wind was broken. He broke wind. <laughs> Amos broke wind. With Prom. his fist. I'm going to channel positive energy. And, uh, wait, no, I'm not. Don't, well, the, the other one has been hurt, so don't feel bad if you heal it. Okay, yeah, I'll just channel positive energy. And also, I forgot, too, that means we're blessed. Yeah, my bad. No, it's in your macro. I forgot to add it. Yeah. One more channel left, people. That's all I got. I have one room left, so. What's the worst that can happen? I don't know. Maybe some giant tigers appear out of nowhere and claw the shit out of us. Just say it. I preferred that fight. Is it Aravin. Um. Balls. Do another perception check. Okay. Even without the perception check, last time you stood there, you got punched in the face, so... That is true. Well, you're still grappled, aren't you, Aravin? I am, yes. 
So oh, then you know for a fact the thing is right next to you. Yeah, you know okay. exactly where it is. No, I need. I'm not sure how if, how uh, to approach this mechanically. Uh, I don't need to make concentration checks when doing hexes, correct? Correct. Correct. But you have to see well, it. Actually, well, you have to be able to target the car the thing. I guess if you're in physical contact with it, you could probably target it. Does that sound like a thing, GM? I'll allow it. If, if you are touching something, you don't have to see it to target it. In that case, I'm going to hit it with a retribution hex. It botched the fuck out of that save. So now when it does damage to me, it takes half of it as well. It's considered a melee attack, correct? Yep. Then it takes half of whatever damage it does. Okay. And, um, yeah. I, I, I did something, so I'm good. Hey, you do more. I just hit shit. You guys just facilitate my hitting shit. Well, you know what? I'm doing my part. Okay, it maintains its grapple. And it does 11 more damage to you. All right, so what, it takes uh, five points then? How's your uh, retribution work? Yes, it takes five. Essentially, whenever it uh, does dam damage in melee, it takes half of whatever it deals out. believe that's how it's worded. And Aravin, you are starting to have trouble breathing. Of course. The person Almost who doesn't have that amulet. Right. Um, almost as if you're you're being smothered. Indra. That's smothered. Oh, um, also, uh, the damage done by retribution by I'm not sure if this is relevant. Yeah, I already, in this case. I already, I already okay. took that into effect. Okay. Okay. Um, I am not touching it, and it's still invisible to me, so I can't target it. Correct with with my magics. You can't target with spells that need to be targeted, but you can, like, AoE. Um, I have some AoE. Uh, They'll totally hit Aragon, totally too, but, you know. But, yeah. Right. So, um, I'm gonna go safer. Uh, let's do Dazzling Display. And give it a little debuff. That's not a bad idea. I mean, it can see you. I don't think elementals are immune to uh, intimidate. No, it's not. It, that totally hits it. So now it is shaken. But not stirred. But negative two to things. Negative two to things, Mr. Goldfinger. Negative who mistake? What? Victor? Every Hoobas tank is a negative Hoobas tank. Victor will sheath his sword. That's a move action, right? Yes. And then he uses a second move action to pick up his bow. And can I use a perception check as well? Yeah. To point the square. I don't think I'm getting any uh, skill check bonuses from anywhere, unless Salah's Dance doesn't. Nothing gives a skill check bonus unless you had heroism on. Yeah. Okay, Amos. Well, no, Amos. I could have been inspired confidence, but I'm doing heroism. Or spying, uh, yeah. 
Uh, well, shit. Amos is going to five foot step to here. Um, and it's all guesswork because I, I don't know, unless I could see where her hand is slapping on the thing, grabbing her. Yeah, you can totally see where she's slapping at. Then I'm just going to attack in that whatever area that looks like. Give me the 50% on all of them. Wow, first one hits, all the rest miss. So, uh, 33 points of damage. Crumb. <laughs> I got no idea what's going on. I guess I'm all perception to see something. You know, flail my arms out, trying to grab some, something. Holy shit, I actually rolled good for my perception for once. Yeah, you, you can't really see anything. Just, just flailing. You know there's something invisible over here somewhere. I'm flailing. Yeah, there's something invisible over by Amos and Erevin, but you can't really make out where. Erevin. Although, hang on, my, uh, if somebody had um, Liberating Command, that would probably be great since it's choking and suffocating the witch. Oh. Yeah, I used that spell already. Okay. Uh, can I cackle when I'm being suffocated or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, do that. And um, you can try and escape. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I do that as well as cackle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do that. Good try. I don't. I don't think you would have escaped Sala's fucking loving embrace with that roll. To be fair, Red's not a boss. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Wait, you don't have escape artist trained? I do not. I don't think I get that as a wish, do I? No, I mean, like, you don't have any points invested in it, nothing? No, because I'm stupid. Pro tip, when you upgrade your uh, headband of intellect next time, you know, and it becomes the next plus, you'll get skill points. Pick escape artist as your other skill. Yeah, I might throw a couple points in next time. Level how, many, how many points of constitution does Aaron have? Let me scroll up. I think 12. 12. Okay. This one is going to try and maintain the grapple on Aravind. That's going to succeed. Yep. Aaron takes 15 points of damage. And it's also going to attack Amos. No, okay. Roll Roll air and strict. Okay. Alrighty, Indra. Okay, this is a mechanics question. Dimension door lets me take one creature that I'm touching. Or at least at this level. One, actually, it's more than one. It's one for every three levels, I think, that you're a caster, so you can take four people. Right, okay. So, yeah, it's, but it's touch. If I yes. touch Aravan and Dimension door across the room, is 
am I going to take that thing with me because it is also touching us, or is it only things I am actively touching? And would I be able, through this this magical thing that they, like, lets me cut through space and time to move through nothingness and appear on the other side of the room, is that enough, like a strong enough force to pull her free? All, yeah, all creatures must be transported, must be in contact with another, and at least one of these creatures must be in contact with you. If you take Aravin, it's coming with. Oh, you fucker. All right. Now, if you try. see it, you could exclude it, but you can't see it. I have an inkwell in my uh, list of, of things. Of, of things, Can I take that out and throw it on it? Please do. That works just like powder. Then I, do, I do that. I throw ink all up on it. Where are you throwing the ink? Um, I'm throwing it. Look at where she is, slapping her hands. Yeah, we were just kind of. Like... So you see a vaguely humanoid. Ink cover shape now. Fuck yeah, that means no mischance. Victor. Light it up! <laughs> Victor studies the amorphous form with his switch action. And then he will shoot it, or try to shoot it. Way to go, Sala. Oh, pretty fucking brilliant. Why don't you be a thinker sometimes? That actually worked as opposed to my other thought of using a trans uh, mutation to turn their heads red. That wouldn't have worked. Well, it would have turned their head red. It just would have been, you know, invisible. And then my haste attack. And forty-six Sonic. And with the last vibration of Sonic from the arrow smashing into it, it dissipates and you are released. <gasps> Save the day. Erevin, you had about two more rounds before you started taking damage from the fact you couldn't breathe. Breathing is so extra. So overrated. Yeah, you know, it doesn't need to breathe at all, so she can just do things all day long. You know, breathing is like 20 bucks. It, it, you never miss it until you don't have it. Wow. <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> yeah. Swallow. Huh. And I guess the, you know, ink pen is as mighty as the sword. Get out. Hey, get out. <laughs> Let's finish search the room and hopefully I can find some more ink. Uh, if you search the room, there are a lot of books and stuff. There is one interesting book called Which Cults of Northern Avistan uh, that seems to detail the practices of infernal cults and their observations in summoning creatures from hell. And uh, it's worth about 1,500 gold. Yoink. And if you want to learn more about this book, for more information on this tome, see page 43 of Pathfinder Campaign Setting Princes of Darkness, Book of the Damned, Volume 1. Would you like to know more? Click. <laughs> I'm doing my part. 
I'm going to drink a couple of potions so that I'm not draining more of uh, Michael's limited resources before we rest, because we still have one room to go. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to suck down a potion, too. You guys could go rest and then come back and do this room. There's one room. Let's, let's clear it, and then... Yeah, I still got some spell slots I can burn, I can burn for, uh, you know, for stuff. So, I mean, I'm not necessarily dead in the water. Just We're not going to go fight the boss now. That'd be bad. Okay, there's my Cure Light Wounds potions. 9, 18, 25. My cure light wound potions, which apparently my numbers up. But oh well, I'm almost full. Man, I got some good fucking potions apparently. They were my cure moderate wound potions. Organic, man. So let's see, 31, 48, right? Does Aravin want Victor's Cure Moderate Wounds potion? I got more. Wow, that literally brought me... That amount was literally enough to bring me exactly to full. And that was all the Cure Moderates and Lights I had been carrying for... Since, like, Thrushmore. That door is not trapped. It is not. All right, how about everyone get out here to where we're in the position we're going to want to go through the door in so we don't have that separation anxiety again? Oh, it didn't make me anxious. I was pretty happy. <laughs> Is it locked? Nope. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Open the door and step in. Hang on. I'm actually stuck on the map because the door wasn't open. Okay, roll for initiative. Jesus. Hey, awesome. Uh, these creatures, they look like, kind of like robots, though less high-tech and more clockwork. Uh, steam funky. Yeah, they definitely look like they have a key in the back to wind up. I mean, there's not actually a key, but they, they look like that's probably how they run. A lot of clicking. Amos. Not even going to fucking try and make friends. I charge. Yep, take away the Sonic. So 25 points of damage. Making friends is so overrated. Okay, Victor. Uh, Victor will study the one that was just charged with his swift action. Uh, is this an engineering knowledge check? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I can't identify them. But I can shoot them. It could be, I'll give you engineering or arcana. 
<laughs> yeah, because Slayers are known for their arcana. <laughs> okay, so yeah, let's see what the shooting part. And if it happens to die, then he'll, the arrows will go in the one just below it. And since he's there, I'm guessing constructs, I shouldn't roll my sneak attack, correct? Correct. Are we still hasted or no? No. Uh, a long time chugging potions. Yeah, haste only lasts 11 rounds in her case, so. Which means you're not blessed either, because you probably stayed there for more than a minute. The fourth one misses. You're shooting the one in front of Amos? Yes. Constructs are not immune to crit, though. Yeah, so roll your crit. Yeah, so that's my rapid shots, and this will be minus two. See, now I wish one of our people had chain lightning. I do have it, but I go last. I have fireball. That's like chain lightning. Wait, you have chain lightning at this level? Really? Oh, wait, no, it's a six-level spell. Yeah, I have it. It's a domain spell, I believe. Yeah, son of a bitch. I do have I just happen to go last, and this kind of sucks. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that doesn't One confirm. time I'm actually useful. I cool. I yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're not useful when you're keeping us alive or anything. Well, I like to be able to hurt things once in a while too, you know. You're like a surrogate herder. So yeah, that's that's my turn. Actually, it it doesn't say they're immune to precision damage. Oh, sweet. You can sneak attack the fuck out of them. Yeah. So you roll your sneak attack on each of those. Okay, let me look it up. So, so that'll be four, four sets of sneak attacks. Was it, what's your sneak attack? 3d6? I want to say yes. So that's 12d6 extra damage? All right, this clockwork creature ticking away. It raises a wand that's in its hand. Everybody give me a reflex save. Ow. Uh, everybody except Amos, who is not in the, uh, in the blast zone. As a small little glowing bead comes to the doorway and then explodes into a massive fireball. <laughs> no, they didn't. Girl.
Okay, all of you who got higher than a 14 take half damage. Erevin takes full damage. So does Crumb. Uh, the next one casts a spell. And all of the ticking you hear from these things suddenly starts ticking very much faster. That motherfucker just hasted them. That one five foot steps back. Raises a wand and casts it. Amos, Amos, give me a. Let me see. Make sure I get the right kind of save here. Uh, a will save. Okay, the bright cloud of sparkling golden glitter that poofs around you uh, does not blind you. Indra. Um. I am... Oh, God, I'm going to fucking regret this. But I'm going to move... To there, they begin to dance. I can't cast a spell, and can I? No. No, but no. you can use your engineering skill to identify these things. Or Arcana. Then <laughs> let's give that a go. Because Indra must do a little dance, make a little love, and get down tonight. All right, these are called clockwork mages. They are clockworks, and uh, they are designed to look like mages, and uh, they cast spells. I tell the group that. Uh, what would you like to know? Um, I would like to know, um, any special vulnerabilities. Uh, they are vulnerable to electricity. I yell it to the group. Erevin? You know what, I am offended that they would try to use a fireball against me, so I'm going to do the same to them. Okay, give me a spell resistance check. Where are you going to be targeting the fireball? Right in this corner here. That should get all the ones I can see, and Amos should be out of range. Uh, fireball's what, a 20-foot radius? 20-foot, yes. You are at 25. Outstanding. Uh, what's spell resistance, spell resistance again? Level plus d20. Your cash flow plus d20. Plus any feats that give you penetrating spell resistance. I do not have. Pretty sure 27 is going to overcome most spell resistance at our level. Yeah. Ah! And what is the uh, uh, reflex save, DC? 19. Did you roll enough ones there? Apparently. No shit. Roll 20 hates me, dude. I'm sorry. It's doing that to all of us tonight, except for the GM, who's just like, oh yeah, I get it. The first one falls down in a clanking pile of gears and springs.
so Amos is now angry and sparkly. Fucking fabulous, dude. Bitch, I'm fabulous. Angry, like, angrily fabulous. Like a pissed off drag queen. I'm like, fangry. Yes. yes. Bitch, I will hold your earrings so you can go at this. Um, give me a fortitude save, Amos. As a... As the last clockwork raises his wand and shoots at you with a ray of black scariness. Is it scarier than a 25? No. So, um... You feel really tired and fatigued. So you know how the fatigued condition. Crum. Crum is going to go ahead and cast Chain Lightning. Okay, give me a spell resistance check. Do you have any bonuses to that? <laughs> no. Uh, the uh, chain lightning kind of seems to skitter harmlessly off the first one. Yeah, that sucks. It's one of them nights. I was really hoping that would go off, because that would have been awesome. Amos. Amos five foot step. And clicks his heels. Your second hit kills that one. That's all I could do. Victor. I can't see anything, so five foot step. And Victor will study the one on the right, and he will shoot it. So the 26 hit? Yes. Okay, so that'll be what, 3d6? Eleven sonic damage. Alright, it is looking hurt, but it is still up. I bet that motherfucker's gonna like throw another fireball or something horrible. Well, it depends on how much the GM wants to kill our first player. Unfortunately, it has a limited number of those. And by limited, I mean one. Can't say I mind. Amos. 
it raises a wand and points it at the guy who just shot at it. And two fiery looking rays come shooting out. So does a ranged touch attack. Ignore the damage on this. This is just for its ranged touch attack. Does a 32 confirm? Against my touch? Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, the world does not. Okay, so that's what, uh, 15 damage? No, don't pay attention to the damage. That was just to see if it hits. Uh, the first ray, does a 30 hit your touch? Yeah. <laughs> okay, the first one does 12 damage. The second one does uh, 38 damage. <laughs> well, shooty. At least you're standing right next to the guy who could just touch you and heal you. For sure. Indra. Well, uh, I'm going to blow my last uh, fourth level spell. Or, sorry, uh, not fourth level, my last third level spell uh, with a haste. Aravin? Aravin? Okay. Uh, no, first I'm going to move in. And um, the one down here, bottom right. I'm assuming they can't be affected by evil eyes since they're constructs. In that case, I'm going to hit him with, mis with mis misfortune. They are vulnerable to electricity. It is true. It's been a while since I did a uh, shocking grass with my cards, so I think I will try that. Okay, that hits. And, uh... Give me a spell resistance check. Yeah, okay, that works. And in a shower of sparks, that one explodes into gears and springs. This one raises its wand again. Aims it at Amos. I need a fortitude save. Okay. Oh, hang on. I got to do the ranged. Uh... Yeah, that'll hit. So. Okay. okay. 
So you take half, so your strength drops four points. Okay. Crumb. Crumb is going to do the smart thing and run away. No. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to gonna get in this room. And channel positive energy, excluding that thing. Just in case, you know. And the dead ones. Woohoo, I did good deals! And you guys are blessed for a minute. Uh, Amos, I will give you this as a freebie. Uh, these are constructs. And healing magic does not affect them. Oh, I know, but like just in case they had some kind of weird modifier. It could be a cyborg. Or a Rubens. tiny, Rubens. tiny little person inside. Amos. Amos will five foot step and full attack. Aravind, you get 25 points back. Uh, the crit confirms and it explodes. Ow. Yeah, we definitely need to rest now. Amos, point. after a few minutes, your strength penalty goes away. So does your fatigue. Yeah, do the whole search. Are there any traps? Uh, uh, no, magic. there are no traps. However, you find a leather satchel in which uh, you find what looks like a, a desiccated hand made into a necklace. And, on that shit. and the, the hand is also wearing a ring. So give me a spellcraft. Uh, Not today. No, even with that, it'll succeed. Uh, that's a hand of glory. The ring figure into that as well? Uh, give me a new one for the ring. It's the whole of glory. <laughs> uh, the ring is a ring of maniacal devices. Uh, you it's also, uh, you also shit. it basically gives you a plus five on a uh, disabled device. A small serpentine statue of a six headed Medusa eating a mouthful of crystal rats worth a thousand gold. A stuffed dodo wearing a pair of small leather boots. Oh god, I want it as a pet. Uh, the boots detect this magic. Is the dodo worth anything? Uh, it doesn't say it is. Rubbish. It's more of a sentimental value kind of thing. Uh, they are boots of friendly terrain. Desert. It proved useful. Let's see. 
pretty sure my computer's crashing. Oh no! A long hat pin with a small black emerald engraved with the words Forever HK worth 750 gold. And a scroll of hold person folded up in the shell of a dead tortoise. <laughs> and in the corner, the final statue that you have to turn the head. Right. Um, so, do we want to go up to that other room, or we just want to close the door here and, and rest here? I think we should just stay here and rest. Up the hounds. Yeah, what we haven't hounds? heard from them for a while. I suppose. The, the lady who let you in said that uh, the hounds were coming out of the mirror, and Amos smashed the shit out of it. Right, okay. We're good then. Because this way, uh, anyone who's hurt, Michael could do his heal checks to see if they get uh, a benefit there without tapping his whatever spells he has left, and then heal people up after that. Yes, I do have spells. I can I can burn a lot of my spells for healing spells. I can cast five Cure Light Wounds. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five of those. <sighs> so who wants them? Well, you could do the provide long-term care for everybody who's injured, so that'll help speed up their overnight recovery. Turning it into 22 points. And then, whatever's left, you could just probably toss on Victor. There's five heal checks. Yeah, only three of us were hurt. Pretty sure that takes me to the top. Well, it'll be in the... When you're done resting, you'll be... You'll get 22 instead of the 11. Add your 22 real quick so I can go ahead and do spells if necessary. <laughs> I think uh, Victor just crashed. All right, Red, there you get five more. Are you done? Yeah, I'm good. That tops me off. Okay. Uh, damn, that's pretty good actually. I'll burn one for me. Psh, plus 10. All right. Like I was only like two off from. Uh, Max, after all that. And uh, Victor will have 22 more. I don't know what he's at currently. Yeah, I wish I did. But let's just give him a couple. Of, burn a couple spells just in case. So like, well, wait until he's back so that 14, he knows 18, what's going on. So 18 plus 22, so I'm pretty sure he'll be good then. Actually, I'm not sure. 22 and 18, that's, that'll be only 40 more. He's probably got about 80 hit points that's as a base. All right, well, why don't we, like, take five while he's rebooting? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Just didn't want to interrupt y'all. He's rebooting. Take a break. Oh, my God. I declare war in Finland. Of course, freaking France has got to jump in. <laughs> I'm getting some caffeine. Ditto. I'm back. Welcome back. I mean, seriously, come on. I mean, does it have to do that? So annoying. So what's going on right now?
Well, for right now, France is shitting all over my freaking parade. But France? Yeah, I know. Steamrolling over him right now, but it's annoying. I am confused. Uh, looks like we're on a. I'm guessing we're on a break. Yeah, did you crash? Yeah, I did. I just we got, got like 44 hit points back. Oh, okay. I'm back. How many are you short? Are you good? I'm good. No, no, no. Other guy. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm short six. There you go. Four plus another ten. You're good now. And are we resting? Yes, sir. Okay, dokie. Right back, me to go to the bathroom. I am back. Welcome back. Welcome back.
Welcome back, Wyatt. Almost had to whip out the replacement character there. No, I got Breath of Life, dude. You'd be fine. Well, two people died. Oh, yeah, then we're fucked. Yeah, that was very, very close. Y'all are lucky those things only have one fireball a day. So, question, uh, does Dispel Magic work on Constructs? They were clockwork. They're still Crazy. Constructs, but... Um, I don't think so. There is a, <laughs> there is a specific spell called Disable Construct. It is on the Witch spell list. It basically uh, just turns off the construct. Right. Cool. I'm surprised we haven't like lost a character yet at all, like permanently. I've come close a couple times. Oh, yeah, we, we, there's been some close calls, but you know we've been pretty. I, good. I, I've I felt an overabundance of mercy from our DM. <laughs> No, I'm actually not being that merciful. Um, that training wheels are off? Yeah, training wheels are off. Training wheels came off when you were in the Dreamlands, because I was like, fuck it, you're in the Dreamlands. And uh, so I tore you apart with tigers. And ever since, I've, I've not really been softballing it for you. Appreciate it. Like in that one, if I'd been softballing it, the first one you would have killed would have been the, uh, for the mages, the, that would have been the evocation one, but it wasn't. But it is a good thing you killed that one before the stinking clouds came out. Well, Indra would just be there like, oh, it's such a wonderful spell. It would have been like, what's wrong with you guys? What, why do you keep coughing? Why are you turning blue? Are we all back? Uh, I think so. So did we rest? Yes. Are all of the mouths on this thing out here open? Yes. Well, I guess we can go down if we're all here. Sal is back, yes? Yeah, I'm just quiet. Anno's back, yes? Use him. Michael's back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright, if y'all are heading down the stairs, everyone gather up so I can grab you all at once.
Group hug, everybody. Okay, you head down the stairs. This curious chamber is a little over 30 feet to a side. Instead of normal walls, hundreds of statues of angelic beings, many bearing spears and other weapons, and others wearing two colored masks, make up the walls of this chamber. The uneven floor is formed from carved faces. At the heart of the room is a single object supported by a quartet of stone hands, a peculiar, slightly rusted iron cube about a foot square. Are any of the angel statues without eyes? Give me a perception check. Uh, yeah, uh, hidden among the carved angels is a single statue without eyes, which can be found with a successful DC 35 perception check. Go, Victor. Did we want to Wait, poke our fingers into it? Why is that important? Because that's like the secret that the curator told us about. Oh, what does it do again? I forgot. You'll find out. Pretty sure it disengages the wards. I totally peer at the cube. So, which wall is that on? Um, it doesn't say, so pick one at random. Victor will cautiously poke the angel in the eyes. Alright, you feel at the back of each socket a tiny brass switch. Do you trigger both the switches? Yes. A deep tolling bell shakes the ground and then fades. The bell tolls for thee. And the, the oppressive feeling of, I don't know, just the oppressive feeling of this place, it dissipates. You no longer feel like you're in a place surrounded by malfunctioning wards. Uh, Salo, you're looking at the box. This appears to be a puzzle box, which features symbols and images representing creation and destruction on its sides. and has a series of movable concentric rings on the top, bearing smaller symbols that correlate to the images on the sides. The symbols are sometimes sigils, sometimes words in different languages, and at other times, simple images that represent things such as serpents, phoenixes, bolts of lightning, an infant, laborers building a structure, warfare, a flowering river, a scouring wind, a blazing fire, moldering fungi, and fruiting plants. I have such wonderful things to show you. I was about to say the very same thing. I, I am both intrigued, yet I enjoy my skin firmly on my body. How, how big is the cube? Uh, this iron box weighs nearly 500 pounds. So it's big. And it seems, to, and it seems to be somehow attached to the pedestal of hands that are holding it up. So I'm guessing the Necronomicon is in there, or was in here. Only way you can find out for sure is to go check it out. Yep. You're our figure outer person. Why don't you figure it out? It is not hands that call him. It is hearts. <laughs> Literally, Indra's making that noise. Just like. Uh, uh, and. Amos will give you a reassuring clap on the shoulder and a slight push towards the cube. Yeah, I like help your profession or something because you're always making these weird noises 
they're they are the sounds mostly of disappointment, but on occasion of just utter do not want. Uh, give me everyone can do this. Give me a linguistics or intelligence check. Yeah, I got a linguistics. Okay. Linguistics eighteen. my intelligence check okay uh those of you who got 15 or higher can tell that you're supposed to do something with the symbols of creation and destruction that are on this so that's all of michael thing. that would be michael our bard doesn't have linguistics i do i just didn't put any points into it Is that plain so that would mean you don't have linguistics This is literally the first time the need for such a thing has come up. Yeah, but it's every point you put into linguistics is another language that you get to speak. Yeah, that's why I put so many points in it. Uh, you can also. Uh, now, if you want to align or try to figure out the puzzle box, I will need either intelligence or disable device checks. Yeah. Ew. Disable device guy. Let's go. Hey, don't we have a ring for that? Do we? We have one ring. Yeah, the the ring of maniacal devices that was found on the hand of glory. Oh, you can wear two rings at once, can't you? You can wear two rings, or if you're wearing a hand of glory, three, because you can wear one on the desiccated hand you're now wearing as a necklace. But it's an X slot. Yeah, but I'm only wearing one ring right now. Yeah, so you gain a plus five competence bonus on all craft traps and disable device checks. Giant step back. Let me modify my thing here. So I know Hand of Glory, in, in basic folklore, what it does, but in Pathfinder, what does it do other than give you another ring slot? Uh, allows you to use daylight and see invisibility once each per day. Boy, that would have been useful when we were fighting invisible shit. Oh, wait. Is a 49 enough? Okay, uh, it takes about one minute for you to basically Rubik's Cube the first ring into place, and then it clicks. Though there seem to be uh, some more rings that move underneath it. Give me another disabled device check. Okay, once again, after a minute of, of Rubik's Cubing the, the box to get the rings moving correctly, you, you hear another click. Uh, give me a disabled device check. Okay, uh, the Cenobites come out of the walls and... Motherfuckers. No, that's not what happens. To think that I hesitated. Um, let me find the right description here. When the correct sequence is found, a strange grating sound echoes from within, and the box starts slowly to expand outward with a low hum to form a one-foot-tall, ten-foot-wide platform with a five-foot square entrance in the top of the surface. The entrance is totally dark, obscuring any, sky or any sight to the extra-dimensional space within. Basically, the box opens into a door. What did you do, Ray? And this is definitely some Hellraiser too. Shit. in there. The box. You opened it. We so we want to go in. 
No, but will we go in? Probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah, hang on. But hey, why not? Hey, Indra, you want to slap me with the heroism before I go in there? She lays a hand on, on his shoulder. It's like, I, I believe in you. Now get in there and get him, Tiger. And Amos will go through the door. Portal. Looks over it at Aravind. Sorry. Hmm. Victor will follow. Yep. So will uh, Crumb. That's cool. a crummy thing he does. Okay, let me change the lighting real quick. This vast stone chamber is lit with large burning braziers set in nooks at each corner. A number of grand podiums set throughout the room hold enormous books. Another massive tomes hang from the ceiling on iron chains like condemned prisoners. Despite the burning fires, the air feels cool and crisp, and the scent of old books and flickering flames hangs in the air. You can see that one chain hangs broken and empty. Well, I think that's some shit. And before you do anything else... Roll initiative. <laughs> yes, roll initiative. Holy guy. Of course, one thing I roll a freaking 20 on is something I don't want to roll a 20 on. No, mine didn't uh, go to the tracker, but it's a 30. Uh, maybe we should talk to it for a minute. All right, uh, let me give you a It looks kind of like that, only It looks like that, only its clothing looks like it's in tatters and its skin looks like it's cracked open and bleeding. It's got, like, tears of blood coming out of its eyes. It looks like that, but it looks like that bad. So rather than bad, a like an evil like... or in bad shape? Um, it looks like there's something horribly, horribly wrong with this thing. Well, Amos will, uh, move to there and, uh, make use of his warrior spirit, giving, uh, let's see, it's, I got plus four to play with, so, uh, yeah. Plus two to the weapon, and uh, I'll put holy on it, just in case. Erevin. Okay, um, knowledge check. See what the balls this thing might be. Planes? Yep, give me knowledge planes. Alright, this thing looks... Like something called uh, an Exender Archon, which is a type of angelic being. But it also looks like something called a broken soul, which is what happens to angelic beings when something goes horribly, horribly, horribly wrong with them, and they turn evil. So it was an angel of some sort to win Sith. Hmm. 
Okay. Um, is that all you get from the knowledge check? Uh, you can ask. Yeah, that's all you get. Okay. Uh, try and hit it with evil eye then. It saves. All right, it's my turn. Crumb. Well. Hmm. I am going to go ahead, move here, and give Amos a protection from evil. Thanks, John. Actually, uh, uh... Either that or full strength, but either one's coming. They're coming next, so. Uh, well, yeah, uh, it doesn't actually help because it's plus two uh, deflection bonus, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a ring of protection plus two. No. Oh. Okay, then I guess I'll give you uh, full strength then. There you go. Okie dokie. Victor. Uh, Victor will use his swift action to study this thing. And then he will try to shoot it. Should I roll sneak attack or no? Uh, you can roll sneak attack. Okay, your second and third hit. Wow, it's got a high flat-footed AC. Yeah, I bet he has a lot of natural armor. And then Victor will take a five-foot step. I mean... That's his turn. All right. It doesn't look like your attacks do full damage. Luckily, all that damage gets rolled into one. Of course, our one diplomatic person went last. All right. Uh, the the creature grows in size, throws its head back, and lets out a loud, agonizing wail. Everybody, give me a will save. Of course, my good save. You know, real bad. Okay, Michael. Uh, Aravin. Yes. A and Amos. You are all shaken. No, I am not. For how long? Because thanks to my trait, I'm immune to shaken. Mm -hmm. 
Indra. All right. Um, I begin to dance, and I cast haste. Want to try and identify him? Sure. See if there's any particular resistances or things we need to know about. Okay, yeah, this is a Broken Soul Exender Archon. And, uh, hang on, there's another check that you have to make at the end of its turn. Uh, this one, I need everybody to give me a fortitude save. Indra, I need your fortitude. Okay. Uh, only Michael fails this save. Okay, uh, you take two strength damage. Oh, sorry, drain. You take uh, two strength drain, uh, four constitution drain, and three charisma drain. Holy shit. All of us? No, just Michael. He's the only one who failed. Okay. And that is its baleful gaze peers into your soul and just shreds your sense of self. Wow. Okay, how much constitution? Four. Damn. And strength? Two. And charisma, how many? Three. Three. It's right there, the order that she rolled them. Uh, okay, Indra, this is a Broken Soul Extender Archon. And what did you want to know about it? Um, general weaknesses and um, immunities. Okay, uh, it is resistant to Sonic. Um, it is immune to acid, to cold, to electricity, to fire, and to petrification. And it has damage resistance. Um... And the only way to hurt it is with an evil weapon. I relay that to the group. And I'm somewhat happy because it, apparently it's not immune to enchantment. Or charm effects. Wait, you said the only way to hurt it is with an evil weapon? Yeah. Like, a broken soul is basically, it's like a fallen angel. So it is still technically an angel, even though it's evil. So it still has all of the angel DRs and resistances and stuff. Okay, so it's DR evil, not just, you can't hurt it without an evil weapon. Yeah, it's DR evil. Okay, I was worried there for a second. Yeah. You, you can hurt it with other stuff, but it's got DR evil. Amos, so were you, were you going to do anything but but check and dance? And I cast in haste.
Just had to add some notes to my weapon. Well, this is what I'm here for. I'll just five foot step there to be a little bit in the way, and I'm going to go to town on Mr. Angel Pants. Okay, that is odd. Hang on. Apparently my macro went funky. So can you change your weapon to being unholy or something? No, it's still holy, but I've got enough pluses that it bypasses alignment anyway. I'm just trying to see why my macro is screwy. Looks like the second to last. It's plus two, blank, plus six. There's two pluses in there. I found it. Okay. Um, but yeah, that is a, that is a crit that confirms. So. All right, I'm just rolling this for the damage. Uh, that's the 31 on the uh, initial damage and 35 on the crit damage. That was just for the. Uh, okay. That, that was your for first, first attack. attack. Second attack. Look at you, crit monster. Seriously? Yep. There's where all of our so, dice went. You gotta say, <laughs> he crits really awesomely. So, you know. So the first attack should be what uh, 66 plus 3, so 69. It's dead. You killed it. Good job. Yeah, I don't know more. That's <laughs> what I'm here for. <laughs> take a couple days and uh, get this freaking uh, ability score damage away and drain. Okay, as you kill it... Um... How much damage you do total? Uh, Around... We... 200? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You, you, did, you did a little over 200 because it had... Okay, let's see. I did uh, 64, 67 on the last hit plus 33, so that's... Uh, there's 102 um, plus uh, 69 and 9, so that's 78. Uh, that's 180. Plus uh, 69 more. So, okay, so what, 240? Yeah, it had 203 health. So as the creature falls to the ground and the body disappears, it's flaming longsword hitting the ground next to where the body was. It vanishes, the long sword sit, hits the ground, the fire goes out, and uh, you see a vision in your minds of Lulz tearing the Necronomicon from its chain and pulling a scroll from his coat. He casts a spell from the scroll and vanishes in a flash of magical energy. As he disappears, the scene shifts briefly to allow a glimpse of a steep-walled, cylindrical building brimming with knolls and topped with a lush garden. And you hear a tired voice saying, Come, he must have he may have the tome, but it's not too late. Come now. But I'm not even breathing heavy. I guess we're coming now. <laughs> okay.
can't these people just like send a good old fashioned letter? Like come to this specific place now, not just, you know, come in this general direction which you don't even know which. Well, we, we, we have a general idea where we gotta go. Because there was the place with the knolls, we have to find that one uh what's a fang? Who's a fang? What's a the, the fighting lash? Yes. In Okino. So I guess we go to Okino, we'll be able to at least track down Biting Lash and where they went. So we're going to go to the grass, you know, to find Biting Lash. So is there anything procurable down here? There's the sword. Oh, the sword's still there? It's a long sword? Mm hmm. Uh, spellcraft on it. So you're going to touch it? Do I need to touch it to spellcraft? Yes, you do. I'm just going to, like, cough up blood and, like, you know, not be happy. Mm. Oh, relax, Indra. You'll be... Oh, sorry, Krom. You'll be fine. The thing ventured. Going to touch the sword and do a spellcraft. Uh, this is a plus three flaming longsword. Kind of holds it out to uh, Amos. Eh? Eh? Something you could probably use, buddy. I mean, I could use it, but it's not a scimitar. Scimitar's got a sweet crit range, too, man. You know, it's also got that nice curve. It does look cool, but does it flame? That's all it can, if I want it to. Okay. So what you gonna do now? Rest for a week. Is that... Was that it? What else? We were just supposed to turn the defenses off and... Yeah, you didn't even have to come into this room. <laughs> well, well, I so mean, we, so we, yeah, we, we, we did. We so just we steamrolled the optional boss, is what you're saying. Yeah, pretty much. That just, that just made up for those fucking invisible pricks. Yeah, we dinged. <laughs> yes, actually, you ding. Oh, no shit. <laughs> ah, look at that. Alright, well, let's... uh. Is there anything else besides sword here that we can abscond with? Do a detect anything magic. Anything else valuable? Uh, I'm pretty sure all the magic books hanging from the ceiling are, are magic, but I'm not about to steal a random book. Yeah, we don't have good luck with books in this place. Yeah, there's there's really nothing else in here except a lot of books that you probably think they're going to notice if you take. Yeah. It would be like in Doctor Strange with Wong's library. You know how you had all those wards that you just shut off? Yeah, they probably know that we shut all the wards off. We should probably get out of this little thing before somebody comes down and closes it. Because remember, we're inside the puzzle box. Or at least the entrance is in the puzzle box. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you head out. Uh, you the the place where there were all those guards before. Um, on your way out, you do hear some screaming, and you do have to go uh, take care of a shoggoth that's over there. Uh, I'm not gonna make you fight it because obviously you can, you can kill the shoggoth pretty easy, or not the shog the proto shoggoth. Um, five minutes. And and from seeing the area, you can tell that it looks like one of these guys exploded into a shot off uh, while you were resting. So that sucks for them. I will 
take the time to sternly admonish them and say, see? No, the rest of them are dead. They were eaten by a shoggoth. I will admonish their remains. See? If you'd listen, you wouldn't be dead. And uh, you head out where you are met by um, you are met by Elder Thur and she is thrilled both that you are alive and that you have managed to turn off the wards. Uh, yeah. The Necronama thingy is gone, though. Lulz took it. Yeah. We went into the little puzzle box and uh, where all the books are hanging. And yeah, he, he took that one. And your angel that was in there was... He was a mess. He was all bloody and evil. And, uh, well, you need a new angel in there. Yes. Did, did, did you find... The remains of Elder Luthin. We did. Hang on. I open up the uh, bag of holding and I take out the reposed corpse that was properly wrapped. Oh, bless you. And she uh, immediately hands the body over to some of her guards who start carrying it off at a quick pace, like they're taking it someplace important. And uh, she says, if you can just wait a moment, I'm sure Elder Lithin would will want to thank you himself for his rescue. But please, take this. I We, we don't have much. We're kind of strapped for cash, but... And this reward is inadequate for the service that you have rendered us. But please take it with my gratitude. And she hands you uh, five thousand gold. It's okay. We won't mention the stuff that we looted. <laughs> Hiding the angel sword. Hmm. What? What sword? I, I I think it took it back with it. Oh no. And she asks, you know, so I, I know there were the, the hounds of Tindalos that were roaming the halls. Were you able to stop the the mirror from summoning more of them? Uh yeah. And were there any other survivors? There were. But they were stubborn, and they did not. No, they're not. They're all dead. No, no, moon. The original moon that we left down there, tied up. Oh yeah, well yeah, that's true. The prisoner might be down there. Moon, one of the invaders. The, the moon, Blow's companion. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's blind and locked up in one of the uh, libraries. We will definitely want to have stern words with him. Oh, yes, by all means. And uh, she talks to you. She asks you about, you know, what creatures were in there, you know, what you had to face. She pointedly does not ask about anything you may have taken. Um, you get the sense that she is at least a little bit used to dealing with adventurers. So she's kind of assuming you stole some shit, but she knows she's, great she's grateful enough for the fact that you managed to you know, turn off the wards and, and bring back her mentor that she's just going to let it slide. And after a little while, you see the guards coming back, and there's an elderly man kind of leaning on them a bit. He looks a lot like the body you brought out. And he comes over and gives you his uh, deepest gratitude for bringing his body back so that he could be raised. Yeah, well, 
We said we would. And uh, w in you know, Elder Thur, she leans over and, and speaks quietly to him, and his face takes on this horrified expression. He's, and he says, it's been stolen. It, it, but we, we are going to help you recover that. Oh, he's like, you must. You must make all haste to recover the book. It, if it falls into the wrong hands, it will be catastrophic. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure Lulz is the definition of the wrong hands. I, I, I imagine he is. The, the Count had a great hunger and knowledge and seemed almost affected by some sort of external force. Yeah, I, probably one of those tentacle thingies. I, Lulz talked very little, but I did overhear his guards talking about a no slaver in a kano called Biting Lash. Yep. We heard of her. We got an image from the angel when he died, too. Some tower. Thin, tall tower, gardens on top. Well, if you can wait a few days, I will see how much information I can put together about this slaver and perhaps even acquire transport for you to Okano. No, oh, that'll be nice. Uh, we got some, some wounds to lick, and uh, maybe some shopping to do while we're here in the big city. Um, would you prefer a an ocean voyage, or would you like to just get there as quickly as possible? Well, uh, you know, if if this is like, uh, you know, fate of the world type thing, I'm assuming that quicker is probably better. But we still need a little time to rest and recover. Excellent. I will. I will acquire for you someone who can, who can take you there directly, and uh, please return here when you are ready. I will see how much information I can acquire for you. Well, well. well hang on. If you got uh, healers that could raise the dead, you think they could uh, heal up our uh, our priest here? Uh, there are many temples here, but. Please, allow me. Well, it was that your angel that went crazy that did it to him, so. Okay, let me see what level caster this guy is. Sorry, I'm back now. It's cool. We're trying to get this dude to, like, fix you. Oh, well, after a couple of days, I'll be fixed. So. Well, the thing is, he just did a, a raise dead or res on uh, the guy's body we brought back, so I'm assuming he could probably cast Restoration. Yeah, no, they, basically the guards took his body to another temple. Which guy? And, and the, you know the body you found that you were asked to recover? Oh, yeah, 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 kind of, vaguely. Yeah, well, basically, as soon as you handed the body over, they took it to a temple nearby and got him raised. Uh, it does not say what level elder... Lithan is, but I assume he's high enough that he can cast Restoration and he casts it for you, so he, he, your strength drain, is, or all of your drain is popped out. I'm no drain no more. Mm. Kind of like it. He'll, he'll cast it for you for the next few days. I mean, he's alive because of you, so he is more than healthy, ha bleh, more than happy to help you over the next few days, you know, remove it all. Damn right he owes us. We spent like three days down there, man. <laughs> and after several days, uh, Elder Lithin also uh, finds out this information for you. Uh, Okano is a slave town. Uh, the flesh fairs of Okano, as the slave markets are known, are the largest in the inner sea region. And at any given time, almost half the population of the pirate city is made up of slaves and their merchant, or of slavers and their merchandise. Also, far from being outcasts, null slavers are welcome and considered to be the most professional of their ilk. They even have their own slave market known as the Laughing Flesh Fair on account of the way bidding is done with laughing cries and barks, where, at least in theory, gnolls are the only traders allowed. By gnolls, you do mean, like, the creatures, right? Yeah, hyena people. Yes, I love hyena people. 
They're always laughing and joking. I kind of like them. Uh, although openly welcome in the city, the null slavers are despised by many of the other humanoids that work the trade. This is often a case of simple professional jealousy, but it's sometimes from a sense of loathing at how they treat their merchandise. The nulls are paranoid about security and operate in a web of deceit. Many take pseudonyms and, and keep their slave pits veiled in mystery. Many of the null slavers keep their merchandise in different locations and keep their most prized possessions in fortified structures away from the flesh fairs. How do they feel about it? Half orcs. Uh, they assume half orcs are pretty much the same as any other non null creature. And one of the most successful and civilized null traders is one named Hyena Princess Nijen or Nijeno, a lady of great intelligence and influence. She is so powerful that she operates openly at the Laughing Flesh Fair and she knows every powerful null in the city. Najina? Najeno? Najeno. N J A N O. Najeno. Hyena Princess Najeno. Oh, she's royalty, huh? Nope. Ain't that the hot damn? Ain't that a kick in the tuchus? Alrighty then. And and I just want to show you this picture. You're not in Okinawa yet. But you'll see this picture eventually. I just want to show it to you because it's awesome. <laughs> That's Magano. He's a fancy lady. That is the prettiest knoll I have ever seen. You know, it is kind of pretty for a knoll. You know, that, no that nose ring just... Mm. So, if you have any shopping you want to do before you leave Kathir, uh, go ahead and get that done. Uh, we're going to end early tonight because you guys crit the fuck out of the angel, which I thought would take longer. You're welcome. And, that was uh, pretty brutal, though. He didn't get the flame strike or anything. Well, he managed to fuck me up pretty good. So yeah, you guys should fail. be uh, level 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys can sell off any stuff you have and do your shopping. And uh, next week you will start in Okano. The Elder Lithin, he finds somebody who will teleport you directly there. Okay, I will uh, update the loot list and tell everyone how much money they got. Per our standard um, management that you do. As a reminder, I'm not going to be here next session, so I'll make sure to have Red's sheet all up to date and stuff before then. Uh, next session, I believe... Well, it depends because I may or may not be here next week either, in which case, I don't know, maybe we'll have a week off. I, who knows? Do, do you guys mind having a week off? No. I would be fine with that. I mean, if that gives you... If I'm missing half the group, so... Yeah, that, yeah. Would give, that would give you more time to level up your characters, decide on stuff you want to buy, look at the loot lists, all that stuff. Oh, my character's already leveled up, but okay. I get I mean, two Slayer talents. I, I will be here next week. Basically, Foms is going to be going out of town to go play Battletech and... Ooh. And shoot rifles. And shoot rifles. Just play Mega Mac, dude. it would be good. Nah, uh, a buddy of mine uh, lives a few hours from here in Virginia, and uh, besides being a big Battletech nut, he's also a huge gun collector, and he has uh, his license for uh, full auto, so he's got a bunch of full auto guns America. to go shoot. Damn. Damn. Licenses. Each gun requires its own license. 
Yeah, and I'm not entirely comfortable shooting guns. I don't mind other people shooting guns. I'm just not comfortable with me having a gun. I'm always af I'm afraid that I'm going to drop it or accidentally shoot somebody, and I'm just... It's okay. Most people agree that I probably shouldn't have guns, but America... <laughs> No, I'm I'm fine with other people having guns. I just don't trust me with a gun. No, I mean, don't trust me. we, we've we've got guns in the house. I just don't want to touch them because I'm afraid I'm gonna fuck something up. And by something, I mean myself or someone I love. Well, usually, it's someone that or the kitty. Want to fuck up, but you know. Well, if you're that hesitant about holding them, then yeah, that's normally how accidents happen. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay with them if I'm like in a shooting gallery, in a shooting range. Because, you know, they've got solid steel walls and, and you know. It's pretty safe. It's no, no, because I've.